Good day, viewers, and welcome once again to Politics in Africa. Today, edition of the program, we are going to take a, a specific focus on COVID politics, with specific reference to politics of ethnicity in COVID state. My guest on the program today is a regular face that we've seen before on this program, and uh, we are seeing you again. But what I love to do most of the time is to allow you to tell the viewers your name. Because you are the one that knows your name, but at least tell our viewers your name. Um, once again, I'm no other person than Ambassador Samuel A. Danjuma. Thank you, Ambassador Danjuma. I wouldn't be taking much of your time with peripheries and the introduction. You, I, I've met before on this program, and uh, I understand your political precedence and uh, all of that. But the area I want us to look at today is politics of ethnicity. Prior to the 2023 election in Kogi State, we had uh, pockets of agendas here and there, Igala agenda, Ibira agenda, Oku agenda, and all of that. What would you say is the impact of this politics of agenda on Kogi State? Um, when it comes to the issue of um, politics of ethnicity, um, in quote, agenda, it hasn't helped the people of Kogi State in any way because um, it has divided us more along ethnic uh, lines than it should have united us. Uh, like you said, before the 2023 elections, we saw what happened in Kogi. The eastern part had um, the Igala agenda, the central had theirs, and the Okun. And I think the Okuns and the central outsmarted us and played the old, uh, old uh, choir buses the old uh, Bainway, and here we are today. It has not helped us. It will not help us. I am an advocate of unity. I'm an advocate of progress and um, the betterment of the people of Kogi State, not minding ethnicity or religious uh, uh, backgrounds or barriers. Now, the best thing to do is let's abolish the issue of ethnicity when it comes to politics. In the general election, so how it played out, it didn't work out well for us. It has never worked out well for anybody. Kogi belongs to all of us. Kogi belongs to the Galas, the Okuns, the Biras, and even the Basas and other minority tribes in Kogi State. We are all one. God has brought us together as one. And if you see ourselves as one and see ourselves as brothers and as sisters, and let's do away with politics of ethnicity and politics of uh, politics of religion or politics of uh, sentiment. All right. Uh, from our internal and uh, investigative journalism, from our finding. We discovered that this issue of ethnicity, politics of religion and ethnicity have not really been pronounced in Kogi State like it is from 1919 to 2023 until date. Uh, we recall from what we discovered in our findings that Abu Bakr Audu relied mostly on Adaba and the Ibira connection. Uh, Alaji Ibrahim Idris relied on the uh, West, the Okun and the Olafemi connection and all of that. But from 2015 till date, the issue of agenda becomes so pronounced. What do you think is responsible for that? Um, you know, one thing that politicians do is politicians are united when it comes to interest. And when they find out that their interests are not protected, they play this ethnicity card and um, use it to deceive the voters to get sympathy from the voters or get sympathy vote, like it is said. Um, through the, 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 from the tragedy you just um, highlighted, it has never been this pronounced like it is now. And it's because of selfishness of some politicians or some accidental, like I used the word, accidental political leaders who are out there just for their own selfish interest, not just for the betterment of the people of East. Before now, I've, I, I grew up in a government um, uh, environment where we were one, no minding what religion or what. Um, uh, tribe you speak, but today we find out that if you want to get uh, sentiment and uh, more votes from one side of the divide, you come with this. Uh, it is an Igala agenda, it is an Okul agenda, it is an Ibra agenda. It has not helped us. And I keep saying the best way to go is let's come as a united front against our common enemy, which is poverty, which is maladministration, which is insecurity, and fight it headlong and stop this divide of. Uh, you're from this, you're from that, you're from that. We all came together. When it was time to create um, Kogi State, I could remember very well um, Senator Amor Ali and um, Amor Kampala then had this argument. And I remember Amor Ali telling Kampala that he will use his Bible of printing 
to see to it that Kogi State is created instead of Okura State. And why was Ahmad Ali after that? Ahmad Ali wanted a united front where we have all the three major tribes and all other minority tribes in the state to have a sense of belonging from where we're far away from where we were before because we're now closer together than we're either in Benue or we're in Kwara. So politics of ethnicity and tribalism will not work. It has not worked. And the best way is to discard it. The argument from the proponents of the Igala agenda uh, uh, is the fact that uh, they, they felt marginalized, according to them, that they are the majority, they have more number, they have more population than the other uh, ethnic groups, Okun and Central, put together. And as such, they should have the advantage of leadership over the uh, quote unquote minority tribe. Do you think uh, the, the minority and majority should have equal uh, mean opportunity of leadership because democracy is a game of number? Beautiful. Democracy is a game of number. Um, when you talk about your minority, and there's a uh, majority, sorry, and there's a minority tribe. Simple. How well did you play your game? Power is not given. Power is taken. Now, when you had the opportunity of leadership, how did you play? I've always said it is nowhere in our constitution where it is written that power, there's power rotation in any of our country. But there's what we call the gentleman agreement. When you come together and agree on terms of um, of the uh, kind of leadership you want. Now, what played in Kogi was um, at the point of, we all remember that the two major political parties in Kogi prior to 2015 had both Igalas as the candidate of those political parties. And the other Igala man on the APC ticket was cruising to victory, but nature happened. And when nature happened, nature doesn't have a ball vacuum. Somebody else had to step in. Now, when the person stepped in, what did we do? We gave our support to a level, and he did the little he could do in his capacity. Now, when it was time, to say, okay, like it was said in the time of Good Luck Jonathan and the Yanadua issue, where he said, okay, let me finish the tenor of my boss. But it was time for power to now return back to. I remember some years ago, a prominent person from the western part of the state, the Okun speaking, that said, the only time any other tribe in Kogi can aspire to be governor is when the Galas agree to allow power to go because they have the majority vote. Yeah, which, uh, Yaya Dozabelo said the same thing. Yeah, yeah, the Igala, 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 united. United, he has no choice but to hand over to them. Then the question is, were we united? We went into this election with six candidates from the eastern part. And you want to blame the people from the other side? You can't blame them. Then we, we shot ourselves on the leg when we started this Igala agenda. It was supposed to be a Kogi unity agenda. A Kogi development agenda. A Kogi progressive agenda. Not the Igala agenda. And the Igala agenda made the Okuns realize that, okay, if we continue this way, when will it ever get to our turn? So what do we do? Since the Igalas have, by divine providence, gotten the opportunity to get into power, the best thing was to align the Igalas and see to it that through negotiation. through negotiation, at the end of the day, power might come to us. Now, power has left the Igalas. What I expect every other person to do is, and this is what I know the people from my Centura district will not be happy to hear, is let's come together, join forces together, give these people that sense of belonging that we are one. By divine providence, they are there today. We give them all our support so that when it is time to come back, I remember you talking about how to um, relying on Adava's um, connection or popularity in the West, in the Central, sorry, to get into power all the time he came into power. And we saw that these people support, we saw the kind of support how to got in 2015, even from the Central Central District. But debt did not allow People even had more support from the West from, from, because of a lot of heavy you know, and the Exactly. Rest of them. So, so, we have always lived together as one. Let's stop this. I think it's high time since the Bureau has, has had the opportunity to produce governor too. It's, it's normal. Let's allow the Okuns too, if the time comes and if proper negotiations are entered into. And what I expect every Gala man to do now is let's go back to the drawing board. All right. Well, Sorry. Uh, let me let me uh, cut you short here. We are, we are still. I'm still trying to get facts about this having more population than the other person. There have never been war in Igala land. No pandemic take life. Nothing there to reduce the population of Igala people. They are still, rather they are still giving birth and increasing in population as it stands. So it means Igala still have more population than the central no, no doubt, and, no and, and the west. No doubt. But again. That. Given even with that population and number, I agree that it was nation that played uh, in the death of Audu and uh, um, 
Jaya Dozabe came in. But again, after that, there was a chance in 2015 for Igala to regain power, relying on the population and all of that. What did you think made Igala lose in 2015 uh, uh, election? And why did they repeat the same? They lost in 2019. 2015 was the divine nation. In 2019, they lost the election. In 2023, they lost. Why do you think they lose all the, these elections, even with the population? No, um, I think this is a moment of truth. And let's tell ourselves the honest truth. The same Igalas, because I always said politics is all about interest. The same Igalas, some of them in quotes, not all generally, for selfish reasons, sold the Igalas for a pot of porridge. Now they came up with this uh, this slogan. Are you talking 2023 or 2019? In 2019, 2019, they came up with this slogan of and mm. and. and it affected and demoralized the voting population of the Igala people. I remember being with um, Senator Alex Kabi and he told me that he got over 600 votes to make him a senator when he considered a senator, just uh, from the uh, Eastern Senatorial District. But today you find out that it is difficult for any governor or chief candidate to even gather 300 or 350 votes only from the, the Eastern Senatorial District. And it's, it calls for question. The Eastern Central District in Kogi State has 51% of the voting strength of the whole of Kogi State. So, ordinarily, we could beat our chest and say, okay, we produce the governor, produce the deputy governor, and still win an election. But because we are not greedy, and our, found, our fathers were not greedy in the past, we felt that no, we have brothers from the other side who should vote. The problem is, we are the problem. I can remember some of the, the, those who are now um, advocates of agenda, the Gala agenda, were the same people who disrupted. And cost us the opportunity of getting back into power in 2019. There are videos of a lot of them on national on, 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 on national TV and the rest of them and on social media where they threatened the Galas not to vote for their brother. So today you find out that the same people are now the people now shouting agenda, insulting our elders, going after anybody who is not in support of what they want just for their service. The question remains: Are you more qualified than who is there? No. Do you really? And, and it, it, it baffles me. Um, something you said when I came in here, you said, you're an Igala man, there's no doubt about that. I'm an Igala man. And why I am so pained, I was telling my father a few days ago, was I can't be alive and watch my brothers being deceived by people just for their selfish interests to go against the system. And in the name of Igala agenda, there's, 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 the, the, the proponents of this Igala agenda are not qualified to be called. They lost the moral ground for them to even say they want to, they, they are carrying out the Gala agenda. Because at the first time, we had the opportunity. For their selfish interest, as I said earlier, they cost us the opportunity. So from that minute, they started shouting the Gala agenda. There was no need for it because in 2019, we had the opportunity. The, it was truly a Gala agenda because agenda and elections in Kogi State has not, it's not new. Like you said, it has been on over the years. We have all known, but it was not this pronounced like it is this time around. So the same Gala cost us the opportunity to get into power in 2019 and also in 2023, because well, who was the candidate you brought for? Can the candidate, does he have the pedigree to become governor of Kogi State? That's the question we should be asking. So that's why I said, it's high time for Igalas to go back to the drawing board. It's not time to start insulting people. It's not time to start threatening people. It's time to go back to the drawing board and say, where did we go wrong? Where did we do well? What can we improve on? It's not that every four years you see people, accidental leaders from everywhere because they have made more money come and start buying for governor of State. Governorship is not child's play. Governorship is not a um, reward system for friendship or, or, or that. Governorship is serious business. And we should we have sons and daughters who have done excellently well in their field of endeavor, public servants and even private in, individuals. But we find that when it's time for election, because they don't have the money to run for, for such offices, they are not called. And you see these people who are questionable characters who come up with money and begin to spread it everywhere and start dropping names and claiming that they're closest people to the president, even when they know that they're heading nowhere. So the truth is, it's time for Igalas to go back to the drawing board, All right. sit down and think of the way forward towards 2027 and towards 2027. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll come back to 2027 and all of that. But, but again, if we agree on assumption that it was violence and the interest of NMUNEME proponents, that cost the Igala people the 2019 election. What would you say is the reason for the 2023 loss of the election? You, 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 you were, you were in the, um, you were in, in the, you are a media person and you are not, you're not, um, 
I want to put it now. You are well aware of the violence that happened prior to 2023 elections. We lost over, if I'm not, I think about 13 young people in the Eastern Central District just because of political differences. There were no killings in general elections in the Central, nor in the West. There were no killings in the governorship election in the Central, or nor in the West. But the killings and the violence were all in Nigala land, were in the Eastern Central District. There's more to this. It is time to tell ourselves the honest truth. See, you, when you don't invest in human capital development, you will tend to face this kind of issues. We were there for 16 years. How well did we invest in our people? What were we telling them when we were in power? What did you do for our people? I tell people something. See, I, I stand for the truth. I'm a progressive young politician. I don't do politics of bitterness or politics of um, acrimony and the rest of them. I say it the way it is. Look at the structure in Kogi State University, Ayamba, and look at the structures in Osa. You understand that there's a, pro there's a progressive and a purposeful leadership that someone who saw the future and decided to build infrastructures that will stand the test of time. Now, but my people won't see that. My people won't want to tell ourselves the honest truth. How well did we invest in our young people when they were there? When it was the time of my people, my father's age mate was, was a local government chairman in my local government. When will I ever grow to become, while we're growing up, they said the, the youth are the future of, of tomorrow. But it, in this time around, we saw that the elders didn't even allow the young people to breathe. Look at what happened in the PDP primaries. The elders did not allow young people to come up. We had Lona, who was going to do excellently well. But no, step now, there's, no, see, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, so searching that the Igala leaders need to really do. I ask this question in the whole of the Igala nation. Tell me one person that we can see as a rallying point that when he speaks, the whole Igala is listening. There's no. But when you don't have elders like that, that people respect, the people listen to, you find out that it becomes difficult for you to make any meaningful progress and the rest of it. So it is time not to insult, it is time not to fight, it is time to come together. We have a sitting government. Let's join hands together, see to it that they succeed. Now, when it is time for us to come back to ask for their vote, they will believe in us, they will know that we are not their enemies, they will know that we are not fighting them, they will know that we want the best and the betterment of Koki people, and they will also give us that, their support. Yes, we have the population, no doubt about that, but it is time for us to tell ourselves the honest truth. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. That's why we have a lot of political parties in Nigeria. I should be of the SDP, you can be of the PDP, I am of the APC today, and we come together. We are family. Political differences. That's why the Northerners are good when it comes to politics. Your father is in the PDP, the mother is in APC, the brother is in SDP. Wherever it comes from, it's going to come back home. So it is time for us to see ourselves, those in the SDP, and to see us in the APC as brothers. But in another party, I will believe that all we want is the betterment and the best for Kogi. Going to the announcement of um, the tribunal in some few days to come, I want to call on my brothers. We have killed ourselves enough. We have the population we said. But the minute you keep killing your men, there's no more weapon of warfare that is more potent as such. Because when by the men are no more alive, certainly your women are going to get married to other tribes and those children are no longer yours. It is not time for us to kill ourselves. Whatever the outcome of the tribunal is, let's accept it in good faith and go back to the drawing board. Come together, let the betterment of Kogi, the progress of Kogi, be our number one priority in the coming days. That is my advice. Thank you. On a final note, you just mentioned the litigation at the tribunal. I you know it is still a long way to go after the tribunal. We have the appeal court, then with the expectation for it to end at the Supreme Court. On assumption, you don't assume law, just like penalty player in football. What do you think will be the outcome of this tribunal? Um, if I give a definite answer, it would be me committing a prejudice. <laughs> that means I'm, I'm preempting. What, but as a politician, I say, if you ask me today, Sam, what do you do? A part of business, I am a politician. It is a profession. It's what I do. And as a politician, what do I do? I read. I look at precedents. I look at the way it has been done before now, and I look at the laws, the rules that guide the game. The people from the 
other side of the divide, my brothers will not want to hear this. But if we go by what is on the books, this matter has been decided. For and against? In favor of the people of Kogi State and against those who do not want the betterment of Kogi people. This is ambiguous. Um, I'm, 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 why I use this word is I don't want to go on battle lines. Part of the APC, <laughs> you, I, you know where my loyalty is. My loyalty is with the APC. <laughs> I'm, I'm somebody that when I'm in anything, you know I'm there. I well, you're a legal man. man. And I'm a legal man. And it will interest you to know that I have brothers from working. Hmm. <laughs> so when I throw my brothers away, <laughs> no, I won't. Okay. So yeah, certainly, uh, like sorry, I said, in one minute recap, all that we have discussed. Kogi belongs to all of us. The Galas, the Bira, the Okun, it is time to drop agenda politics. It is time to see or come together and work for the betterment of Ogi. Our common enemy is hunger, our common enemy is poverty, our common enemy is insecurity and underdevelopment. It is time to join hands together from the three senatorial districts and support His Excellency Ahmed Usman Odudu, the sitting governor of Ogi State, for, the, for him to be able to carry out his laudable programs that will better the lives and the people of Ogi State. Like I said earlier, election results, um, tribunal judgments will be entering any moment from now. Whatever it is, let peace be our number one priority in Kogi. Support our brothers if it goes their way, which I know by the grace of God it will. It is not time to fight ourselves. It is not time to come burn our houses. Let's come together and work together for the betterment of Kogi State. And Kogi and us, the citizens of Kogi, will be happy and be better for it. We can see what the governor is already doing. And we know if we give him more time and stop distracting with these tribunal cases and the rest of them, he's going to do excellently well. Like you said, if the judgment goes the way we want it to go, which we know it will go by the grace of God, I don't think there will be need for appeal nor need to go to the Supreme Court. But in all, Kogi should be our number one priority and the peace and the betterment of Kogi State should be what every Kogite should be looking up to. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, viewers at home, uh, it has been a very, very educating informating and entertaining moment with Comrade Danjuma. Here, we'll draw the curtain on the program Politics in Africa, and our point of call today is Kogi State, where we discuss politics of ethnicity. Hope to see you again on another edition of this program. My name is Onecha John, and this is USTV Africa, your number one internet station. We are the voice of the new Africa. Thank you for being with us. <laughs>